Here's a comprehensive problem on the journal entries surrounding issuing bonds at a discount and a premium using the effective interest method. So on January 1, we issued a $3 million bond that's at 9.9%. .9%. It's 10 years. And we sold it at 102. So we received cash of 102.6% of three million dollars meaning we receive cash of three million seventy eight thousand dollars we need to credit bonds payable for the future value or what we're going to re, uh, repay which is three million dollars so notice I sold this bond at a discount or above a hundred percent so because of that I need another credit, so it's called premium on bonds payable, for 78000 The difference, the plug. On March 1st, we issued a different bond. It's a $2 million, 9.2% 10-year bond, and uh, the bond was sold at 98.2. So we're going to debit cash for 98.2% of $2 million. So this bond was sold at a discount and the amount is $1,964,000. We're going to credit bonds payable for the future value or the face amount of the bond which is $2 million. And you can see that we need another debit to make this balance for 36000 so it will be called discount on bonds payable because we sold the bond for less than its face amount. Now on June 30th, we're going to pay interest on that first bond and amortize the premium. So we're going to debit interest expense and it's going to be for the carrying value $3,078,000 times the effective rate and the effective rate in this case was 9.4% and it's a semi-annual bond so half a year. So the debit to interest expense is going to be for $144,000 666. I think we rounded to the nearest dollar. Yeah, that's what it says. We're going to credit cash for the bond, which is 3 million, times the bond's rate or the stated rate, and this bond was paying 9.9%, and it's semi annual, so it's half a year. So every six months, for as long as the bond is outstanding, we'll send out a check for $148,500. So it looks like we need to amortize some premium, or make the premium melt away till it's nothing. So the premium is going to get plugged for $38,34. So that's the plug. It also appears on September 1 that we're making our first interest payment on the bond that was issued at a discount. So we're going to be debiting cash for the carrying value of that bond, 1964 1964 times the carrying value excuse me, the effective interest rate on that bond, which is 9.5% for half a year. So the amount, oh, look at that. So the debit to interest expense, I think I'm thinking about money. The debit to interest expense is the carrying value times the effective rate times the time, and that amount on September 1 is $93,290. dollars 
I'm going to credit cash for the bond, and the bond, remember, was two million times the bond's interest rate, and that bond uh, was a 9.2% bond, times half a year. So the amount of cash that we're going to pay is 92000 every six months for as long as that bond's outstanding. So it looks like the amount of discount on bonds payable that we will amortize is the difference, which is $1,290. So that's the discount is getting plugged. And the carrying value in this case will grow because it needs to grow to two million dollars, whereas the premium needs to be reduced to three million. So continuing on, on December 31st, uh, we're going to make a semi-annual interest payment on that first bond again. So this is their second payment. So that second payment is going to be debit interest expense, credit cash, and that bond was issued at a premium, so we're going to be debiting premium. So the interest expense, the old carrying value, was $3,078,000. We said it's going to be shrinking or reduced by 3834 and we're going to multiply that by the market rate and the market rate is still 9.4 percent for this bond for half a year. So the debit to interest expense is going to be for $144,486. The premium Oh, excuse me, the cash, which we found before, is 148500 and the premium is going to get plugged for the difference, or $4,014. Also on the 31st, we need to make an adjusting journal entry for the second bond. So that adjusting journal entry won't be for six months, so it's an AJE. And so it's going to be debit, interest expense for the carrying value. And you'll remember the old carrying value was one million nine hundred sixty-four. Excuse me, one million nine hundred sixty-four thousand, and it's going to be increased by the twelve ninety uh, premium a uh, discount that we're amortizing times the market or effective rate, 9.5%, for four twelfths, for only four months, since it's been four months since our last interest payment. So that is for 62 to 34. Our credit is going to be to interest payable because we're not paying any interest at this point, and that's going to be for two million times the bond's interest rate, 9.2 percent, but again it's not for a full six months, it's only for four months. So that's 61333. And the reason is it's been four months since the last interest payment. So the discount is going to be amortized by crediting it, so discount on bonds payable, for the difference of 901. So on March 31st, when we make that second payment, it's a little more involved because we're going to have interest expense for 
for the 1,964,000. That has been increased by the 1290. That has been increased by the 901. So that takes us through December 31st times 9.5%. And how much time has passed since the beginning of the year? Well, two months. So the amount of interest that pertains to the new year is 31117 Now we also have to make that interest payable payment that we had amortized through the end of the year, which was 61333 So that gives us the six months of interest. So we're going to credit cash for the six months of interest, which was the two million times the bond's interest rate, 9.2% for half a year, because we pay interest every six months, which is $92,000. And we find that that entry doesn't balance and that I do still need a credit to discount on bonds payable which is the amortization of two months since the beginning of the year. And the plug that I need is $450. So those are all the journal entries regarding this. Stay tuned. We'll answer question two when you return.